about two and a half decades ago in 2002 to be precise when Porsche said they're going to launch an SUV a lot of us were skeptical what a sports car manufacturer would get into but the Cayenne was a runaway success and in 2013 they introduced something a little smaller more convenient and we all love the product that was the Macan but in 2025 this SUV is completely electrified. It's a born electric vehicle. I had my skepticism, but after I drove it, it completely changed the way I look at electric SUVs. So, join us in finding out how this Macan Electric actually makes sense. And is it really fun to drive? Let's find out. I'm Shrigan. Welcome to Flyweek. The changes are quite significant on the front end. First thing we notice is the headlamp area has changed. Now this is a LED DRL, quite similar to its cousin, the Taycan, the electric one. And of course the headlamps have been moved below and there are some air vents here and at the bottom too. But it still has that overall bulky muscular feel on the front end. And the lip is quite interesting too. Make note that this is the base level trim of the Macan. We are usually used to these kind of operations for a hands-free boot, but in this, it's quite interesting. You swipe on the Porsche shield and it opens up. You have 84 liters of storage here where you can easily store a charging cable and a backpack. That's the advantage of an electric SUV. We can call it compact, but it really is not that small. It's quite significantly big and the bulkiness gives it a very nice macho feel. At the same time, it has some finesse through this sloping coupe roof line and that chunky wheels that you see, 21 inches, and these are optional. Similarly, you can also customize things like the cladding here, which has a nice texture to it. You see the charging ports here, which works with gesture controls again. The one on the left is for DC fast charging. The one on the right side of the car is for AC fast charging. Of course, this seems a little less and the ground clearance looks good but it can be enhanced for off-road purposes as well right now it's on sports plus mode the lowest setting the air suspension can go to and the highest setting is really good and can take you places of course this is a dual motor setup and all the four wheels are driven through the wheel and my favorite part of the car the rear it's so good looks so proportionate and the practicality that this SUV has to offer is quite significant. You can fold the rear seats, have a lot of cargo room and you get the Bose surround system again, which is optional. Now, moving on, should we go drive it? Of course, there's no exhaust on this, but it sounds really good on the inside and tell you how. Once you step in, certain things are very familiar like the steering wheel. But what you see as an instrument cluster is very unique. It's a curved full digital screen and it doesn't get the usual cover that comes on top to protect it from the sun's reflection. Easily readable, no problems at all. It can adjust with multiple different layouts. Coming to the side, you have the gear shifter right here or the gear selector with a park button and three toggles for reverse neutral and drive. Coming to the center, you have a standard infotainment screen which can do a lot of things and control a lot of features on the car you get a wireless charger and that to a fast charger at it and it is cool so your phone is going to be quickly charged and cool almost all the time the best part is this haptic feedback panel here where you have toggles for your climate control and your volume rocker and your seat heat option but sadly we don't get a cooled option it's just heated seats and coming to the co-passenger, you get a very nice screen here, which is optional, but it's really useful, you know, to play around and toggle with music. And when you're driving, that screen is not at all visible to you in terms of safety. And not to miss the OG analog come digital clock that comes placed at the center. It is really useful. It does get uh, a toggle for your drive modes, and I'm sure you can instantly see the colors change here. This is the sports chrono package and you can also time all your laps. The ambient lighting is quite quick to respond and it's bright. So even in daylight, you can clearly see it. And you have some cubby storage right here. Good under armrest storage. The seats are quite different because these things have a fabric feel to it. 
and on the sides is this leatherette. Very comfortable, the 14 way electrical seats on the base variant as an option is going to be super expensive. All the options of this car are going to be listed on your screen so that you get an idea of each and everything that is extra on this base variant of our car. Let's go to the rear seat and check it out. Of course, you get a sunroof and that's why it's so bright at the moment. Coming to the rear seat, it's quite high to step in. And of course, the car can go down as well. But what you notice instantly is under thigh support is less. The reason is the floorboard houses the batteries and the floor is raised a little bit. So that way it feels a little uncomfortable. And of course, the wheelbase has increased and what that gives you is some extra leg room. You have blinds at the rear which are electronically adjustable and the windows are quite big too so you get enough light and air. The seats here are quite big and this is set to my height even with that I can still have some 3 inches of knee room and about 2 inches of headroom. So somebody taller than 5 foot 10 will find it a little difficult to sit at the rear. It does get a good armrest with two cup holders, dedicated AC vents with blower control and temperature control for each passenger, which is quite useful. Overall, the rear seat experience is far better than the older Macan, but still, it does not feel like it's made to be sat here and driven around. It's more for the person that's going to be driving, so let's go drive the car. I'll tell you why I've fallen in love with the base variant of the Macan Electric. So, this is the least powered variant of all the three Macans that is available in India and in the UAE. The thing is, this puts out about 563 Newton meter of torque and 268 uh, kilowatt of power. And it is still so powerful. It is so much fun to drive. So, what I'll do is I'll just go to sport plus okay let me do one thing i'll switch to normal mode i am just cruising around 60 odd and i set my foot on the throttle <laughs> you see how i went back right and i'm already doing some really good speeds of up to 130 and coming back we will switch to sport let me slow down a little bit now i'll switch to sport plus and I'm back at 60 kilometers per hour. I'll switch to the faster lane. Three, two, one. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 130 again in no time. So, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in just 5.7 seconds. That's also fun. And of course, we're talking about electrics. But the thing is, the 4S and the turbo variants get dual motors and a four-wheel drive system or an all-wheel drive system, as we can call it. But this one has a rear wheel drive. So the motors are pushing the rear wheels and it is one of the few Porsches that have a rear wheel drive in the SUV space. And it can just instantly give you the torque and the fun element of this SUV is what really excites me. Apart from that, you know the practicality of a car like Macan, the SUV like Macan, and I don't really need to say a lot more about that. So that is one of the key reasons I've been saying, I'll tell you why it has made me happy. Why there's a smile on my face driving an electric SUV. And that is the main reason. Coming back to practicality, once you switch back into normal mode, easy, just put the cruise control on and uh, if you are in a good highway, you don't need to worry about anything. There is great visibility all around, you have the power bumps to give you an idea of where you are on the road and you get a clear picture of your surroundings. That really helps when you are driving around, especially in the traffic in India, but of course in Dubai for the highways, this is ideal. The 
minimalism that you see inside on the dashboard really makes it you know nice and easy to drive so it's almost a flat dashboard you don't need to peek around to see what's around you and the sensors do really light up when you're in traffic you can turn off the beeps which really helps and just a click away so that makes your driving in the city also much more calm and peaceful so if we talk about the other two variants the power figures are crazy it's 800 and 1000 odd newton meters of torque so you can imagine how fast these cars are and uh, just to give some balance what Porsche has done is in the base variant they've offered the best range so you still get great performance and the range is really promising the WLTP uh, claim numbers are 641 kilometers on a single charge but realistically in the real world I feel that we can get somewhere about 450 500 easily again it depends on your driving there's a region button turn on and turn off quite easy but this car has been just driven 700 kilometers when we got it today for the test and we've been driving it quite a good uh, number of kilometers and it seems very promising the range hasn't dropped much i think we got it at four around 450 kilometers of range and we've been pushing it to the maximum you've seen me just zipping through and it's still showing me around 274 kilometers so let me just see what's been going on so we've driven it for a good uh, 150 kilometers and uh, i'm really liking the way this car drives and it feels so electric suvs yes we are getting a lot of them but is porsche a good buy of course if you're looking for a luxury product it is something that offers a lot if you like performance outright like the porsches are really made for yes go for the turbo if not you want a practical car that still has enough power for you to have fun on a weekend drive then go for the base variant as well so that or anything in between you decide oh the brake bite is also really good so with that i feel we've covered almost all the points of the porsche what do you think about it the makan do let me know down in the comments see you in another video shigan signing off bye bye